What I'm going to talk about tonight is marbling on wood, and it's something I've been playing with for a number of years. Uh, Tom, can you give me this camera? Uh, marbling on paper uh, has been done for bookends and things like that. And there are a number of different patterns and, I mean, infinite number of patterns and things you can do with it with different paints and different colors and um, different designs. And I'm going to show you that when it's put on wood, it can be it can be pretty dramatic. So this is these are some of the paper models that I've been making and we'll do we'll do a little bit of paper tonight because paper allows you to see the colors better than you can on wood and it gives you some advanced notice of what things are going to look like. To um, start off, I'll show you a couple pieces that are finished. Uh, mostly I, what I've been doing are platter rims. This is a about a 10 inch, well, maybe nine inch platter. And the rim is about an inch and a half. And the colors wow. on it are, there's a, a mixture of colors. Actually, this is a double dipped piece and I can talk about that a little bit later. This is an urn I made. It has four panels on it. Uh, each panel is, is dipped separately. And you get the, the different colors and patterns from the uh, marbling. This is a smaller piece I've done recently uh, with, with some uh, stencils. And we'll talk a little bit about stenciling and tonight. This is another small piece. There's lots of different patterns that you can create with the marbling. You've, we've done the fish dish demo for you. This is a fish that's been marbled. And uh, Christmas ornaments marble Christmas ornaments and put designs on them. So if you're interested in marbling on wood, the thing that I think kept me going with it after working with it for a number of years was uh, the ingredients. Uh, what, what you need for marbling is you need a, a tray or something to put your marbling fluid in. And the fluid uh, or the media that basically is used is acrylic paint, but you have to float the acrylic paint on something in order to marble. And what was used typically in the uh, early days was carrageenan. Carrageenan is uh, made out of seaweed, and it's a very good marbling solution. The paints float nicely on the carrageenan, but it's made out of seaweed, and it lasts for about two weeks and begins to smell like the seashore. So, um, and, and I, I had limited luck with it using some of the acrylic paints. So I was at a um, an art fair one day and this woman had all these marbled scarfs, uh, silk scarfs, and, and they were just, they were gorgeous. And I, I said, well, you know, how do you do that? And she said, well, um, I, I float the inks on the, on the solution and dip the uh, the silk in there and uh, it comes out like this. And I said, well, great. Uh, where, what kind of paints do you use? What kind of marbling solution do you use? And she put me on to a company called uh, Pro Chemical and Dye. And I have a handout for this uh, that I'll make available to you. I don't know how exactly I'll do that. I'll talk with Dane about doing that. Um, and it has all the information about the, the chemicals and where you get them. But for about $15, you can buy a kit. And in that kit, you get everything that you need to start mar marbling. Let's see, can we get a picture of this down here? Yeah. They give you your paints. And these, these are um, acrylic paints that have been specially designed for marbling. 
you get the you get alum, and I'll talk about alum in a in a minute. And you get a package of methyl cellulose, which is the medium that we're going to float the paints on. Let's see if I can get this camera. Methyl cellulose, which you float the paints on. And there's enough methyl cellulose in here, it's 55, 50 grams, to make two gallons of solution. And it's not expensive. If, if, you know, uh, 50 grams, there's what, 400 grams in a, uh, a pound. You can get a pound of methyl cellulose for about $12 and uh, have a time of your life. So anyhow, that's what comes in the kit. And I strongly recommend that if anybody's interested in starting or trying marbling, that you start with the kit because uh, it can be very frustrating to use materials that don't work. And, uh, uh, and, and it will save you a lot of time. Now, I've already made up some methyl cellulose. I use a, a kitty litter container. This is a gallon. So in the kit, you get two gallons. I mean, you get enough to make two gallons. You need uh, distilled water. You mix it with the methyl cellulose. You can see it's, well, you can't see it. It's kind of syrupy. Can you, yeah, it's kind of syrupy or it's, it's thick. By the way, methyl cellulose is the main ingredient of KY jelly. I just thought maybe somebody might like to know that. Yeah. Um, and you also get directions with the kit. So we have the methyl cellulose, and uh, the first thing that we have to do is to um, get the bubbles off the top of it. And I use, you can use newspaper, but I found that paper towels work much better. By the way, mar marbling does not like sawdust. I can tell you that right now. And my shop has sawdust, so we'll talk about what that does later. Well, when you get the paints, they come in these little bottles, and there's enough paint in these little bottles to keep you busy for a long, long time. The pigments settle as they do in any any paint. So you have to shake them up real well. And then when you put, the other thing you might want to do is, is wear gloves. My fingers turn all different kinds of colors. My wife tells me, you know, maybe you should wear your gloves. Well, it wears off in two or three days. It's not really a big deal. But it's acrylic paint and it sticks to, it loves flesh. It really sticks to flesh better than anything. So I've shaken this this red and I'm going to put a drop in the middle of the container and you'll see it spread across the surface. Now it can spread fast or slow depending on a lot of different things. One, the density of the methyl cellulose, two, the temperature of the room, uh, and especially the thickness of the paint. And it, especially, I mention this because if you're going to use your own paints, and you can use your own acrylic paints, but if you're going to use your own acrylic paints, you're going to have to treat them with a uh, surficant. And the surficant is nothing more than something that breaks down the surface tension of the paint. So you can use a drop of, of uh, Dove dish soap if you want to. Uh, people who have, didn't, who have worked with... Um, Photography know about photo flow. Photo flow is a 
uh, uh, surfacant. And I'm going to put two drops of surfacant in this little red bottle, and you'll see the difference about the way the paint spreads across the surface. Shake it up real good. So that's the difference between paint that's been conditioned, they call it conditioning, the paint versus paint that hasn't been conditioned. Now, the other thing about putting the paint on the surface is that it has boundaries. In other words, this paint will not mix with the other two paints because of the boundary. Even if I take a stick like this, and I pull a line through that paint. You can see a form of a pattern, but the paints don't mix together. If I put a drop in the middle of a color, I've got two drops in there. You'll see that it's spreading because of the the uh, surfacant that's in that. So this the uh, this paint is thinner than the red paint and it's causing it to push out. If the red paint were thicker, it would keep that green paint in more. But I can put more paint in the middle and you'll see it forms those boundaries. What happens if paint is not conditioned? I'm going to take a, a, a paint here that I know is going to give me a problem, and I'm going to show you how to fix it. What happens if the paint doesn't sit on the surface, I'll put it over here, is that it, it will spread some, and the remainder of it will sink to the bottom of the tray. Now it's going to make a liar out of me. This one is, the other one, this one won't. But you see, it doesn't, it's not spreading out very much. But it's not sinking. That's a good thing. Now here's a black paint that I, I believe this one will sink. Yeah. I don't know if you can see the little drop going down the bottom. Yes. Right down here on the bottom. Yeah, you can see it. I think the other camera did a better job. Anyhow, so this needs surfacant. Now, what happens when it goes to the bottom is really nothing much except that the paint isn't going to be very useful on the surface in the design. So we'll add some surfacant to it. I'll put three drops in here, four drops. Shake it up real good. Tom, can you switch back to the other camera? Perfect. Okay. And I'm just going to put, now you see with a surfacant, it spreads across the surface of the wood. Now I can take a stick or a comb and come through that paint. and make a design. That black is still pretty heavy. It's still sinking to the bottom. And it, does, it will not affect what's on the surface 
All it will do is later on make the methylcellulose quite uh, dark. It, it'll still work exactly like it's working now, but it, it, it'd be hard to see your design on the surface. I'm going to take a piece of paper and just take let that ink get on there. It's on the paper. I'm going to wash it. I have a tub of water down here. I'm just rinsing it off. And except for the fact that I had a blob, uh, let's see, where are we? Which camera? We have a blob of, I had a blob of paint on my fingers. That's the design that I get on the paper. Now, before you, before you dip the pa paper or wood on the surface, I'm just going to throw this away. You have to treat it with alum. Alum is a, uh, uh, oh, what the, it's, I'll, I'll think of it. It's an, it's a slight acid. This what, what makes blood coagulate. If you cut yourself and you're shaving and you put an alum stick on it, it'll, it'll keep, it's a coagulant. Okay. Or a, um, and it combines with the wood in order to stick the paint to the wood so that it won't wash off when, when you're done. So what I do with alum with the wood is I'll, I'll, just, I have a little spray bottle and I don't want to do it over the, put the other, the number one on. And I'll just spray the thing like this with the alum. And then I'll set it aside to dry. And it has to dry uh, because if I put it in there, the alum, the paint will stick to the alum. But if the alum isn't combined with the wood and dry, It'll just wash off when I put it in the water to wash off the methyl cellulose. Questions so far? Am I going too fast or? No, you're doing good. Um, can you restate the name of the dye or the paint kit that's being used? And then is the gel reusable? Yes, the, the, the gel, the um, methyl cellulose is, is not going to deteriorate like the, like the uh, tarragonin. And here, here's a bottle that I made that I've been using. But you see how dark it gets, and it is a dark. The, it's getting dark because of the ink that sinks. And so, even so, the ink that sinks doesn't bother anything. It just makes it hard to see the pattern on the top. If you know what you're doing and you know what you're looking for, it it won't matter much. But I mixed up this fresh batch so that basically you could see what the the patterns are without without any problem. Can you hold that box up to the camera? Oh yeah, I can hold the box up. Uh, this, th all this information's on the handout and I'd be, let's see, which camera am I on? There this you go. One? It's called Pro Chemical and Dye Marbling Starter Kit. And they're, I, I think they're in Massachusetts. And, and they're, the, the whole thing with shipping comes out around $15. Where can we find that handout? He's I'll going to get that to, to me. And I'll it. get it to the website. Yeah. yeah, I'll send it to I'll send it to Dane, and then he can post it or do what you want with it. It's not on this computer. I'd give it to you right now, but it's not on this computer. It's on a different computer. So, to continue now, uh, once I have my once I have my uh, paints conditioned, and I I think this black paint will be okay. Um. I'm going to clean off the surface. So only the surface paint's going to stick to the wood. And 
and it also gets rid of the bubbles and any residual dust or anything that might be sitting on the surface. Now, every time I, every time you mix up a batch of uh, methyl cellulose, you use a uh, well. I use still distilled water, but the measures uh, twenty five grams isn't a lot, and it's easy to get off a little bit and make it a little bit thicker, a little bit thinner. So you have to go kind of go through the process of of uh, what's going to float the inks best um, as you as you use it, and that's where you get you know, the ink that sinks and creates the problems, the uh, issues later with seeing it. But there's lots of different ways of putting the ink onto the surface and, uh, and, and making designs. I like to work out of a little tray. I'm gonna move this up a little bit so you can see the tray. And Let's see what I got here. Emerald green. Put some green in that bucket. Some yellow in this one. By the way, these these paints will last you a long time. <laughs> it doesn't take a whole lot of ink or paint. And where's my red? And you can mix the colors together in the tray to make a different color. If you wanted a particular orange or something, you you mix it before you put it on the methyl cellulose because it will not mix on the methyl cellulose itself. So I'll make a little orange here. I'll put a couple drops of uh, red in the tray and a couple drops of yellow. That gives me an orange. And one of the ways that I like to put the paint on is the, I use these little fan brushes. And I I don't know, they're very cheap, inexpensive fan brushes. I get them at Costco in a, in a box of a whole bunch of brushes. And um, I find them quite handy. And I you just make splatters on the surface of the water, of the methyl cellulose. Because you're putting on a small amount, it tends to spread out and not not be as uh, uh, aggressive as as putting a great big drop on. So I'll just set that aside, and I'll put some blue in amongst the. Now there's a, I saw there's a a, a guy on uh, was it Instagram, Pete? That you saw that TikTok. TikTok. There's a TikTok video that um, Tom was showing me today, where a guy is doing marbling on hats and making these these fantastic designs, and um, uh, maybe we can get that link to you too somehow. Uh, if if you want to see the real artsmanship that that people can put into this, uh, as far as uh, artistic designs instead of uh, a broad based design like this, so I have a platter. This is a maple. Let's see where I am. I this is a maple platter. And move this. That's the one I'm on. Yes. Just move it up a little bit. Well, back out. Okay, that's good. Yeah. There we go. Okay, my maple platter. This one's got a lot of wormholes in it. So I figure, well, I don't know what it's going to look like with the marbling, but we'll we'll go with it. And uh, I'm just going to, I've already put the alum on it and it's dry. So I'm just going to put it down on there and and get the platter rim marbled and pull it up a little bit there you go 
Now, there's a lot of methyl cellulose on there, and I'm going to wash it off. I usually take this out, and there's a sink outside my shop that I can run some water over. And there's the marbling on the rim. Wow. Now, if that doesn't suit you, one of the nice things about it is you can marble over top of that. And I'll talk about that in, in a minute. I'll show you some other things first. But that paint is on that wood. And the only way you're going to get it off is to sand it off or to turn it off. It's not going to, it's not going to come off. So that alum makes it almost dry, instantaneous. It's not dry. It's 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 actually becomes part of the cellulose in the wood. I mean, it actually is oh. trapped in the cellulose in the wood. So it's like like um, uh, a a mortar. It 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 it's, uh, it it cements it into that wood. Right now, you, uh, some woods are slightly acidic, and if I didn't put if I didn't put um, alum on it, and I have a sample of that around here somewhere, uh, what would I do with it? Well, we'll come across it. But, um, oh, here. This is, this is an end grain piece. And I put alum on this piece, no alum here. Then I put... Um, uh, milk paint on on this side here with alum and, and no alum. I mean, alum and no alum. And what you can see, well, you maybe you can't see it real well, but the uh, part with the alum holds the, the uh, dye better than the part without the alum. Now, the, the, this is not a very typical example because this is end grain and paint will stick to the end grain far better than side grain anyhow. So if I did this with side grain, it would be, it'll be much, and I'm going to do it with side grain, it'll be much more obvious what the alum does. Okay, here I have a platter that has, uh, this is the natural wood. This is bleached. This is sycamore. It's this is natural sycamore. This is bleached sycamore, and this is milk paint. And I'll create a design, and we'll put it on there. You'll see how the color of the wood also affects the brightness of of the design. Walt, when you wash it off, do you use tap water or distilled water? It's tap water. Yeah, it's just a five-gallon bucket down here by my feet okay. that I'm rinsing it in. Notice I say, actually, what I usually do is take it outside and I run it under the faucet. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skim this off again. Start over. Now this this might not suit uh, Mr. Duxbury because it's not anything that he's going to be able to replicate exactly. Well, maybe he can. He's he's an engineer. He probably figured it out. Just just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge would be accepted. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to put a little different type of design on here now. It's another technique, basically. And this is the one that's done so well in the um, TikTok video that Tom's going to find how where he can get it. But the technique is to take the paint and put it on the surface and then go with another... I'm just using a, a skewer here 
uh, using another skewer to put the paint in the center like this. And you build a bullseye. And you can see how little paint it really takes. And uh, I'm going to speed this up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put some of this green in the middle. This will, should spread it out a little bit. I'm going to put some green around the edge. Now, the ink's only going to stick where the paint is. And what I mean by that is the methyl cellulose around these edges has no paint in it. So if you dip the piece in here and it doesn't hit paint, it's going to be wood. It's just going to be, there's not going to be any evidence of, of paint at all. And if you're doing a platter rim, you got to think, well, where's the rim? The rim's not in the center. The rim's out here. I'm going to just cheat a little bit here and go ahead and put some of this red out here. This is great fun, by the way. Looks and like if it. you get hooked on it, you'll want more colors. And they sell all kinds of colors. They sell mahogany and they sell um, uh, teal and plum. Some of my favorite colors are mahogany, teal, and plum. This is what comes with the kit. So that's why I'm sticking with it tonight. All right. This is if, just, I this is dip, just... if I want to dip if I want to dip this again, I have to coat it, I have to put more um Alum. Walt, Walt, you got muted somehow. Now? Can you hear me now? We got you now. Yes. Can you? Okay. What I'm saying is, if I want to dip this again, I have to put alum on it, and I have to let it dry. And I'm not, if I'm in a hurry, I'm going to come out to my heat gun, You turn on the main. You notice that the the pattern on the uh, surface of the methyl cellulose really isn't moving. The reason the alum has to be dry is it's a solution, and if you put it if you put it into water, uh, well, it's wet. I mean, if it does, if it hasn't bonded bonded with the uh, wood underneath, if you put it in the water to wash it off when it's wet, the the ink will wash off right with it. I'm probably rushing this process a little bit, but we'll try it and see what happens. So you see the pattern, and I'm you, you see what I'm I'm putting it on. I'm putting on top of that.
I'm rinsing it off. And now that's my my rim pattern. So you see, it's a creative process. If you don't like the colors, you can take it back to the lathe and cut them off. Wow. Look at that. All right. So we'll move on to the next that stage here, the next demonstration. How much time have I got? Okay. Got plenty got of, time. Bit of time. All right. Plenty. Oops. Well, I, I put this on, by the way, with uh, hot glue on the bottom. And uh, you can see that when wood gets wet, it comes off a of hot glue. So just keep in mind that I'll set this aside to dry. Well, what would you do if you had areas you didn't want colored? Would you mask it off with tape? Yeah, we'll, we'll get we'll get to it. Okay. <laughs> I anticipated that question, so we'll get to it. So let me uh, let me clean this off one more time. Okay. Well, it won't be the last time either. And Ron, we will wait for the uh, your question to be answered as well, because that'll be answered later on as well. Well, I, I just want to show you how how the it's masking. You you have to mask it off. If you don't want the color there, there's many ways to mask it off, and uh, you can use tape. Uh, you can use a masking solution that you buy at uh, Michaels or um, Hobby Lobby or any Dick Blick. Um, uh, basically, just keeping the the water and the ink from getting to the wood. Let me dry my hands off here so I don't contaminate everything. All right, so I'm going to go back to putting some patterns on here, or putting some ink on here. And I'm going to do it a little differently this time. I'm going to put a base layer across the whole thing. So I have a base color. I'm going to use yellow. And I'm not uh, a watercolor artist or uh, an oil artist, so I don't know. There's there's a certain procedure of going from light to dark or dark to light in order to get certain effects. But what this does is it confines, it, since the surface tension is uh, around all around the outside here, it confines the spreading of the inks inside some. And you're going to find all kinds of new ideas if you play with this. I remember working with a rim, so I'm going to keep it around the outside. Where's my green? I saw the, the uh, red, white, and blue dish or, or bowl that somebody made in red, white, and blue dye. The only problem is there is no white. White is the, the color of, that you get from the base that you're dipping. So if you want to try white, and I've tried this, you can get acrylic paint and thin it down and float it on there. And it does create quite a, uh, a stunning contrast when it's on the black and on the wood. Okay. Um, one more thing, and I don't... Uh, not see what I, this is this is something called a comb and it's nothing more than something that you can run through the inks and it has a spacing on it so that when you do it on a pattern you'll get an even 
kind of design on the whole thing. Now, if you if you look at the instructions, one of the, the biggest problems people have is uh, ink sinking to the bottom. And what their solution is, is e either you need to add more surficant or you need to uh, thin the methyl cellulose. You say, well, thin the methyl cellulose, why would that? Well, I don't know. But the, the answer is the methyl cellulose can be too thick and it does not help it to have it too thick. And why, I don't know. Okay, where did my thing go? So we're going to do this just to look at the difference in the colors uh, on the surface of oops of this wood. I'm just going to dip it in there like that. And I'm going to rinse it off. I know the methyl cellulose is thicker than normal because I've done this so many times that uh, when I when I made this, uh, I thought, well, maybe I should add more distilled water. But I thought, no, keep it. Th stay with the stay with the rules and see what happens. Okay, so what we have is the original. Uh, sycamore wood here. The 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 uh, ink over milk paint here, and the ink over the um, bleached wood here. You see the difference? Yeah. It's not that it's good or bad. It's just that they are different. And if you want a really bright color red or yellow, the wider the wood is, the brighter the colors. Now we think about the silk artists, they're dealing with white silk. And so their colors are gonna be really true and really bright. You're dealing with wood, wood, is, wood has a color. And that color affects any color you put on top of it. So uh, I one of the solutions, like the uh, this this piece here, this is bleached camphor. So I took camphor and I wood bleached it in order to make it lighter, so that the colors would be would be brighter on the surface. I've done it on cherry also, and um, it it works well on cherry also. I'm sorry. Could you show us which so one? Yeah, could you show us which, uh, again, is the wood, the milk paint, and the bleach, please? This is the milk paint. This is the whitest. The colors are the brightest. This is the bleached. The colors are bright, but they're not as bright as the milk paint. This is the wood, and the wood is not as bright. I mean, the, the sycamore that's not bleached, that is not as bright as a sycamore that is bleached. Can you see that? Thank you. Yes, thank yes. you. Does it show up? Does it, does it show yeah, up? Yeah, it's well showing. It okay. shows great on, so my, there, on so, my phone. So, so there's the, another the, question. The, yes, go ahead. There's another question in chat. If you allowed it to dry without rinsing, what happens? Well, you have the methyl cellulose on the surface, which would affect your finishing later on. Because you're going to put a finish over top of it. Um, I mean, it, you know, like a lacquer or a varnish or a, a wax or something like that. And you're going to have a layer of methyl cellulose on top of that. It's, it's likely to flake. You're not, not, not going to give you an even finish. So you do want to get the methyl cellulose off of there. It's not dangerous. It's, not, it's nothing that um, uh, it would be harmful or to, in any way. It just, I just don't. I haven't tried it. I mean, you could try it and see what happens. And and that's part of my thing tonight is that 
you have to try different things because there, this is not, in my opinion, there, there's a lot of science to it. But when you when you go to use it and you're putting it on something like wood and your uh, in your own creation, there's also a lot of experimentation, and you you'll come up you'll come up with something that I hadn't thought of, uh, perhaps, and and you can give me some advice as to you know how to do it better or what looks good good for you. Hey Walter, so, uh, Walter, yes. on, on your vase, did you tape that off? Did you tape off what's not colored? Yes. On, on that well, base. Yes. It's I'll, I'll yeah, I'll talk about that in a second. Let me let me put this down and hey, uh, hey, hey, well, it, what, hey, what, hey. What, can we can yes. we stop interrupting Walt while he's doing his demonstration, no, that's okay. please, folks? No, that's okay. I am I'm, I'm I'm happy to answer that. Um yes, I took blue painter's tape and I, I cut off everything I didn't want to marble. And I marbled one panel at a time moving it around, washing it off, letting it dry. Next next panel, moving it around, letting it dry. And when I got all done, I masked off the the the, the frame and airbrushed the uh, black paint frame on there. So it's all masked. And I went to New Zealand and I showed this in New Zealand and and this and, and somebody I had been working with um, with uh, marbling and and uh, he got all excited about it and everything else and he called he called me on the phone from new zealand after i've been after i got home he says am i correct in thinking that you had to mask all that off in order to paint that black border and i said yeah and he says i was afraid of that <laughs> so you know it, it, there is some work involved all right, so let's uh, try something different. Now, um, I made a bunch of little bottle stopper tops. And, and when, you know, my, my uh, suggestion is the, the platter rims work really well. And, and this, this, by the way, my, my container is something you can buy. Can we get down here? This, this container is uh four dollars at uh hobby lobby and it's uh nine dollars at michael's and um it's a 12 by 12 uh scrapbook container it has a lid which is very nice because if you're working i do it with the lid if i put something if i put something down in my shop and turn around three times it disappears If you're working and you're not going to finish everything in a day, you can just stick this lid on top of here, come back the next day, and everything's going to be great. So we're going to move on and see what I got here. I'm going to have to get some of this out into here. It's for round and in. You have to be able to dip something down far enough, like on a 3D piece like this. I'm going to have to be able to go all the way through the surface in order to get paint on the bottom. That that should make good sense. So I'm going to need a different container. I'm going to need a container like this where I can go all the way down. So I'm going to move this cellular. I'm going to move this to a new container. First, I'll, I'll uh, skim it off. Probably should have started with a small container. That way it would be a lot easier to move to a large container. So I'll have to remember that for next time. All right, is everybody watching? Here we go. I'm going to get all this stuff in here without spilling it, right?
I didn't hear any applause. <laughs> I'm clapping for you. Yay! Yay! Okay. That's the one thing about remote demos that I missed from a live audience, I'll tell you. Um, all right. However, you're a great audience. I'm not trying to say anything about that. Pardon? I got it. All right, so put that right up there like that. Now we're going to move the camera up a little bit. The other reason I think this methyl cellulose is a lot, is thicker than normal, is I'm getting many more bubbles. I usually don't get this many bubbles. All right, so we're going to do a couple things here. We're going to do a, I think I'll start with a bottle stopper. So I think this will demonstrate better too what the, what I mean by boundaries. Uh, and around the edge. Got that bubble right there. Bubbles leave holes. If you have a bubble in it, of course, the, the paint isn't going to be there, and so you'll get a spot on your wood. Not a big problem because you can take a little paintbrush and take a little little paint and uh, and uh, spot it out. We're going to do one of these bullseye things here. We we'll use Christmas colors. Now you can see how the blue is not moving very quickly because it's being constrained by the space that's being taken up on the surface by the green and the red. Now, if I put yellow in there, which has been thinned out quite a bit. Whoops. What was that? That's something in a shop fell. No big deal. I'll put one thing of black in the middle there. Why did I do that? I don't know. Now again, if if you're an artist and you want to make uh, a heart or something like that, you can do that. If you want to make a flower, you can make a flower. Um you can to continue to mess with it as much as you want. But if I'm going to take a bottle stopper, I have a three eighths inch dowel rod I'm sticking the bottle stopper on because that's the hole that's in it for the bottle stopper. Whoops, where are we here? Can you see that? Okay, I'm right down in the middle. And the paint comes around the piece. Wow. And that's what it's going to look like.
And I'll just set that aside to dry. And someone else was talking earlier about uh, getting fingerprints and things on the wood uh, and the finish. And um, this is very susceptible to something like that because if you have an oily spot or a uh, super glue spot or you fill something in on the rim that, that the uh, alum can't get to the wood, it's very likely that the paint won't stick on that on that spot. Okay, now I'm going to answer the question about masking, I hope. I'm going to take a stencil. Oops, so much for that. And are you all familiar with uh, Chroma, Chroma Craft? Chromacraft is a, a company that sells stencils. The, this this package is blank, but uh, they also sell stencils like dolphins and butterflies and birds and things like that. I have a little box here. I take my glove off to do this. Take the stencil This is a dolphin and a little uh box there has been al there's alum on the box and I'm putting the stencil on the box and just for balance because this uh, might come out. I'll put a second stencil on the other side. This is an adhesive stencil. It's, the stenciling material is adhesive. It's a light, what they call a light tack adhesive. I'm going to put one, I'll make this one frolic, like this one up this way. Can you reuse the stencils? You can reuse the stencils, yes, as long as remember the 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 um, enemy of adhesives is dust. So as as you use these things, if they if they get dusty or you put them back on, you can put them back on the plastic. Like I put this one back on the plastic that it came on, and uh, I can use these again. I want to keep them as clean as possible when I do that. When I get done with these, if they're if they're still in good shape, I can uh, just stick them on the back of, of the mask here and uh, I can use them again. I've used stencils many times. So now I'm going to put my uh, ink on the, uh, or my uh, paints on the surface here. Again, the Pink sticks to your hands better than almost anything. I'm going to use blue and green. 
let green be my uh, background color, blue be my pattern color. And again, it's not going to need to be, it's not going to spread out a whole lot because of the green. As a matter of fact, it's sinking uh, a lot here. Did I pull the wrong one? No, that's good. So I'm going to take this now and uh, just make some sort of a a pattern on it for the for the box, a C pattern. That's my C. That the, that the porpoises are frolicking in. And in this case, I don't have a, um, I'm just going to hold it and dip it down to the pattern line. And wash it off. I could take my stencils off. If the ink got, if it got under the stencil, it's not going to be nice and clean. If it, if I kept, if I got it under, well, it will be all right. That stencil does not want to come off. There's my box with my dolphin. And there's lots of things I could do beyond this. Um, I could I could paint the dolphin. I could uh, uh, I could uh, uh, treat it with alum and dip it again in a different color, which would make the dolphin a different color from the background. Uh, there's just no end to the different kinds of treatments that you can do for these things. Well, I think, well, I've got lots of other things here we can dip. We can, you know, just mess around a little bit. But I think that basically I've gone through all the different permutations of uh, things that you might want to try if you're, if you're starting out at this. Um, it's not expensive, it's not hard to do, and uh, it really is, in my opinion, a lot of fun. Excellent demo. So, Walt, uh, one of the questions was, um, on the on the, one of the plates that you did, the center, the center yeah. mass, yeah. you were just able to wipe yeah. the uh, residual paint and stuff out, was that because there was no alum, alum treated on uh, the center surface? On this? This the one you're talking about? No, one of the demo pieces that you did. Um, all you had to do was just wipe out the center there and, and there was there was nothing nothing left but the wood. Is that because there was no alum oh. to make the paint bond? Ah, ah, ah. This one? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, okay. This this was already coated. With this was one that I had done earlier that I uh, I put on the lathe and cut off and, and redid the, the bottom. But this is finished, yeah. So the paint's not going to... this. I, I'm, first of all, I only put the alum on the rim. But this the second thing is this already had a coat of lacquer or... or okay. Um, so you had on it. it. Yeah, so okay. all I do is wipe it off. So you okay. can do it. Right you on. can do that. Although it's not as clean, I, if I'm going to if I'm going to finish this, what I'm going to do is resand the middle, 
And I'm, I'm not actually going to finish this because it's got the three different things on it that I just did it for a demo. Um, what I would do right. is I'd just uh, put it on the lathe, make, clean it off and re-dip it. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Now, now on this yeah, one, yeah. on this, on this one, okay, there's the back. There's the front. What I'm going what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on a lathe, cut cut out the bottom, sand it, leave the leave the uh, rim alone, and then uh, turn it around and finish off the bottom. Uh, okay. And uh, I use a, just the same way I did the fish platter demo for you. I use use a um, I put this flat against uh, a jam piece, and then put the tailstock up, and then and cut. Cut the cut it away where I where I don't want the wood, you know where I want to finish it off. So the today's demo really was more about the marbling than the than the uh, turning, but uh, right, right, uh, okay. You know, it, it, there's many many different ways to do this uh, with with regard to finishing it off. Oh, I and, bet. Uh, and what's the uh... What do you find is the best finish to go over that lacquer or, or any oil or? My my uh, favorite finish is uh, Krylon matte spray, and you may say, "Well, that's funny that you would use matte spray because most of my stuff is uh, shiny, somewhat shiny. Mm -hmm. I don't like it totally mirror shine, but I do like a, a smooth surface. Let's see, I can hold it up like that. And what I do is I I I put maybe three or four coats of matte lacquer on it. I buff it with a Beal system, and you're not going to buff the paint off. Don't worry about it. You got three or four coats of lacquer over top of it, and then I use a um, a wax uh, a micro uh, Renaissance wax, okay. and and that's it. And then on and your part of the pardon. For the for the paints, when you're uh, dropping them into the uh, the jelly mixture, um, so don't call it. Does 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 the, does the thickness... call it me. Yeah, I mean the the methyl cellulose, your, right? Your your, your your methyl, yes. So, does the the thickness of the paint determine the uh, spread of the paint floating out into the, the mixture? Thickness, yes, that that's. That's where the artistry comes in, in terms of, or I, I should say the science comes in, uh, in that the thickness of the media, the thickness of the paint, the amount of surface area that's available for the paint to spread in, the paint that's already there that confines the other paint, they all work together. And um, I think this methyl cellulose is a little thick. From my, from my experience, it's a little thick. And I should probably add some more uh, distilled water to it. Now, as I was saying, you know, this is this is looking pretty bad now, right? It's not as nice, nice and clear as it was before, but it still works the same exact way. Once that ink is, once that uh, paint is a part of the methyl cellulose, it will not stick to the wood. So, even though all that stuff is down there, if I take and I'll do it just just to show you. Um, Here's here's a, a bottle stopper. There's no paint on the surface. If I stick that down in there and bring it back out, there's no paint on the surface ah, of the piece. And it won't stain it either. It's because the methyl cellulose is containing all that. It's, it, it's grabbing and containing all that right. pigment. Huh, interesting. And then would you, could you, could you strain that paint out? Run it through a filter. No, you, you can't. You you can't. I've I've tried putting it through a paint strainer, and all you're doing is is basically mixing it together a bit, little bit more than it was before. Okay. It, it does it, does it, the paint the, the paint the pigment is so fine. When when you get done and you look at this and you say, "Wow, there's that's that's not that's not very, uh, it's not very dark. It's not really very fine." When you put the lacquer on that, I mean, the way it dries, it'll be dull, and it won't look as bright and shiny as as this does. 
But when you put that right. lacquer on it and pull it and uh, and put a little bit of uh, finish uh, over the top of that that reflects light, you're you're gonna you're gonna pop those colors right, right out. It, it's just about it's until you do it, it's just hard to understand how that happens. Right. Yeah, I bet it's very interesting. And about how deep does the uh, the, the paint go in through the wood grain? The topical. Pretty much, it's it's on the it's on the sur it's on the surface. It does grab into the top surface of the uh, of the wood, much like a stain would, but you can sand it off. Yeah, I mean it okay. it doesn't penetrate. It's not an alcohol stain. It's it's um it's acrylic paint, so it stays more on the surface because of the uh, uh, the alum grabbing the the paint and just it, and embedding it in the fibers, but you can sand it off. Uh, if you, if you want to, you can, if you, if you had, or if you were a real rough buffer and you didn't put any lacquer on that, it would take you a while, but you could probably buff it off with some AAA or something like that. It, it would never all come off until you sand it or, or cut it off with a, um, uh, gouge or something. Right. Or and we have a non, we have a non wood question here from one of the members. They're sure. wanting to know. With regards to hydro dipping, there be any advantage to using the methyl cellulose and alum on plastic or metal? Did you know anything about that? Hi, hydro dipping, so, yeah. Hydro dipping is a different process. Hydro dipping, yeah, different you're you're working with water as your as your base, but what your what your surface is is your, a piece of um, printed plastic. Are a printed base like a like a um, a decal paper, and so you you uh, you print that decal paper, you put it on the water, and there's something called an activator, and you spray that activator on there, and it releases the paint from the decal paper, and then you dip. So it's a different process. It, it requires different chemicals. It requires uh, it, the chemicals have acetone or something in them that that. I, I I tried it. I didn't like it, and and it's I, more expensive. <laughs> so, being as cheap as I am, this is this is my choice. Can but I interrupt I did try that for just a second? Sure, you could. <laughs> Sorry, um, I've seen hydro dipping done with just paint, not with the printed and activator and all that stuff. But it's usually done with a uh, with spray paint. And I, I've tried it out a little bit and the on plastic stuff, just playing around, and the paint stayed really sticky afterwards. Yes, because the paint is an oil-based paint. It's a okay. it's it's an enamel. Okay. And so you're you're dealing that's why it floats on the water, because it's an oil. So it it it, it is sticky. It's messy. It 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 uh, the paints will interact with each other, uh, you know, on the surface. Uh, yeah, I've messed I've messed with that too. And there's there's also a bunch of different kinds of marbling stuff you can get at the uh, uh, hobby stores. Uh, I bought one. I bought some at uh, hobby. No, it was uh, Michaels. And I, I brought it home, and and what it said is, you need to put float this on to such and such after treating it. And then I, I didn't have the such and such, whatever it was. I didn't read the bottle in the store. And I went back, well, we don't carry that. Well, what, why do you carry the paint if you don't have the such and such that has to go with it? <laughs> Gee, you know, what do cashiers know, right? Okay, so, thanks. So, um, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff out there. <laughs> to me, for for woodworkers, and and um, from what I've seen, uh, this is the best way to start. Now there are all kinds of paints too that are are golden golden art paints, and I've tried those, and I have a whole set of golden paints, and golden paints are are so thin they spread across the surface like gangbusters they just go right across the surface and that that can work for you or it can work against you 
but that, that wasn't part of tonight's demonstration. <laughs> right. So this is this is my recommendation for people that want to get started and uh, have some success at this and uh, and and not spend a ton of money. Well, thanks for all, for all you all having me, and uh, uh, I hope you have a good time with it. Here, great. I, I will send. I, I'll send the handout to Dane, and uh, he can get it wherever you can get get it from. Is that okay? Yeah, that'll work. Dane's get them to me, and then then we'll get them on the web page. Okay, Thank great. You. Thank you again, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was great. So we. We did have one request from one of the members that came in late. So he, he caught it when you were you were finishing up. He wanted to know if you'd be able to do it all over again. <laughs> uh, yeah, two or three days will be a rewind. He'll catch it on the rewind. All right. Once again, thank you, Walt. Anybody else have any questions before we let Walt go? Let's have a bus night, right, Walt? <laughs> I love Great job. Thing. Great job. Loved it. All right. Take a bow, sir. Thanks, Walt. It's great. Thank you.